So there is an emerging untapped market that hasn't really been figured out yet. It's still pretty early on and, and people are trying to truly figure out what you can do with it. Now, the cool thing about this is, is SHIB has uh, essentially a hidden plan when it comes to this. And I want to talk to you guys about it. Now, what this is about is the metaverse. The metaverse may not be your thing, but I want you guys to hear me out. So this is actually talking about Sandbox, another metaverse in the space. It says metaverse is dead in the West, but so hot in Asia. It talks about some of the largest markets, Hong Kong, Korea, Japan, and some of the things that people are able to do in them right now. Virtual worlds are an emerging thing. Maybe it's not your speed and that's okay. But believe it or not, there are a lot of people that are getting online right now that are utilizing virtual worlds, whether it be, you know, through things like the metaverse or gaming or things of that nature. Right now, there's 3.09 billion active gamers in the world. That's a lot of people, guys, almost half of the world's population. Now, here's the thing. What he said is ultimately Borgay concluded that there's no right or wrong way for the metaverse sector to foster widespread Web3 adoption. And that's what this truly becomes, right? Web3 adoption. So with this subsector of Web3, the metaverse, right, you have an opportunity to bring in people that aren't necessarily familiar with things like crypto or NFTs, all right? And you can foster that adoption by basically putting it right in front of people, right? You're By getting people into the metaverse, you're already opening them up to things like NFTs and crypto. And this is a big thing. And I think the SHIB development team knows this, and that's their plan. It's to make that easier adoption from one to the other. If you get into the metaverse, you're exposed to NFTs and crypto. If you get into NFTs, you're exposed to the metaverse and crypto. You get into crypto, you're exposed to NFTs and the metaverse, right? It comes full circle. And that's why I think that it's pretty cool that obviously the SHIB development team is building this vertically integrated decentralized ecosystem, something that can help foster all this adoption. Now, we don't know you know, what kind of success this is going to have yet. Obviously, we've only seen glimpse, uh, small bits and pieces of what the metaverse is truly going to look like. But it seems like there's a much bigger plan there to integrate, you know, uh, uh, retailers and things of that nature, make the metaverse essentially a one stop digital virtual shop when it comes to uh, the SHIB ecosystem. All right. There's a much bigger plan at play here. Some people just shrug off the metaverse like it's nothing. Guys, it's a lot bigger than what people realize. It's like the early days of NFTs, right? People didn't really know what to do with them. You know, digital pictures of cats and dogs. Hey, that's cool, right? Obviously, Shiboshis, but it's getting an evolved use case. And that's what the metaverse can do is it can get this evolved use case again for retailers and things of that nature to bring in those that are currently outside the space. That's how everything, again, comes full circle. That's how you get broader adoption in, in crypto. Sometimes you need those little baby steps, those stepping stones to get to the point where things function that way. But this is something that can definitely accelerate that process. So I've wanted to share that with you guys. I've always found the metaverse kind of interesting. I never used the metaverse, but I understand why it can actually be a big deal, not just for the crypto space as a whole, but especially when it comes to SHIB adoption. So I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, but I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.